Welcome back everybody, it's Punoi Crossover. We talked about the disappointing starts, so now let's talk about the surprising starts. Marky Mark. Well, let's talk about the good teams that actually played well in the mm -hmm. first week. Uh, the Pelicans, we got the Bucks and the Nuggets. So the Pelicans had a 3-0 start. They beat teams like Houston, Sacramento, and uh, the Clippers. The Bucks beat New York, Indiana, and Charlotte. Nuggets had a 4-0. They beat the, uh, the Clippers, Phoenix, Golden State, and mm. Sacramento. Who's been your kind of best surprise of the first week so far? Um, between those three, Pelicans and Nuggets have been surprising, but I'm leaning towards more the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. I mean, they both beat good teams. Pelicans mm -hmm. beating Houston, mm -hmm. Nuggets beating the Golden State Warriors. But if you look at the scores where uh, all the Pelicans game, they're, they're just destroying teams. They destroyed mm -hmm. Houston by what, more than 20 points. Mm -hmm. Sacramento yeah, it was by 20 points. for Houston, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's my pick, the Pelicans. And they're playing really well, um, mm -hmm. and especially Nikola Mirotic, uh, he was really surprised. What a pickup for the, you know, do you think that was a steal from uh, Pelicans to get him from, uh, from Chicago for nothing, literally? Right? Yeah. Well, he wasn't playing as well in, in Chicago. So. He was playing okay. Yeah. Because he was trying to get out from that Bobby yeah. Porter situation. But when he was, uh, when he was traded to New Orleans, it's just, do you think his addition to the Pelicans has helped uh, Anthony Davis' game to kind of, to kind of be on a new level? Because now, remember when, when Davis was playing, he, he didn't have enough shooters around him mm -hmm. where he's always getting double teamed. Do you think this was like, has shown, uh, has given Davis the full potential to kind of work around his full game? Or, in, or is this just merit? Is just a good player? Um, a little bit of both. Yeah. I feel like, I even feel like um, Davis is playing better mm -hmm. with Mirotic than when Cousins was there. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, they, they got to share the ball. Yeah. And with Mirotic, yeah, like you said, um, they got to spread out the floor, and then Davis could just do his thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, and I'm support. I'm sticking to the fact that Davis is going to be MVP this season. I gotta always. He's going for it. I right? feel like I feel like this is his season. Yeah. Um, he was a lot of injuries in the past, but I feel like this is the time where he's again, like you said, the potential, and he has the tools now. And especially with the floor spread out, like he'll be dangerous. Like his handles exactly. and his athleticism. And then if he gets his passing, like, oh, man. If he, if he gets that, uh, I mean, that playmaking side of his. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when he was in, in high school, he was, in, he, was, he, he was small. He, didn't, he, got, he had a growth spurt, so he was playing a point guard. Oh, he was so playing that's point why guard. he mm -hmm. had that handle that you could see. Uh, he was playing the program before he had a growth spurt and, and went to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. I, think, I think my surprising team is Nuggets. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, you know, Murray. Oh, Jamal. Jamal, yeah. Murray, Mr. Canadian. Hey. Oh, but he's playing nice. But um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't even know uh, Denver was 4 and 4 and 0. I just checked it's, a couple of days that's ago. That's why it's such a people. surprise. Yeah. Like, yeah. To me, I mean, I've watched two of their games. I, mean, I watched yeah. them play against the, the Golden State Warriors. I mean, it, their play is just everything, surround, everything starts and, yeah. and, and revolves around Jokic. Mm -hmm. And who, if any one of you guys have never seen Jokic play, you watch him play. I mean, this guy is just pure finesse. Uh, no athleticism whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, in his yeah I, I swear he has guy, none. <laughs> if you guys don't know, this guy drank like at least two liters of Coke a day. That's what he told us. Like, <laughs> and he was playing in the NBA drinking two liters of Coke a day. So, I mean, his game is just finesse. His, 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 his passing. Can, the passing. I mean, he has passes, two guards yeah. Yeah. that benefits from his game because Jamal Murray and Gary Harris are off guards really the way they play and he, everything just revolves around him. And shout out to his skill set too, just to cap, capitalize, he broke a record that no one thought would be br like broken. Since the, well, was it? Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain. Yeah, the perfect from the field. Wow. And I forgot to what score specific. 35, mm -hmm. nice not game. miss, and have a triple double. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you're a big man that's learning how to play basketball, like, learn how, how Jokic plays. Yes, and don't drink two Cokes. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't drink two Cokes. <laughs> You'll be an athletic version of, of Jokic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I can say the same thing for the Bucks too. I mean, they, I know they face kind of a weaker team with Charlotte, New York. Indiana's a good team to beat. So, I mean, yeah. yeah Giannis is just taking his game to another whole new level. He's just been scoring at will. He's been distributing the basketball like he has always done and then rebounding. And then on the defensive end, he's always everywhere too. So it's giving him a shout out and then giving a shout out to the new coach, right? Because now Mike Bolenhorst is kind of utilizing Giannis's full, uh, full game 
to its maximum potential and surrounding him with players that uh, just running the plays a little bit better than Jason Kidd did when he was uh, he the coach for Milwaukee. So I want to kind of give him a little shout out on that, what he's been doing for them. Mm-hmm. And he's adding a little bit of a shot. Like, I know it looks a little bit ugly, <laughs> but he, he he almost has the same amount of like, size of hand as Kawhi. Mm. So maybe if he learns the way Kawhi shoots the basketball, and despite having big hands, it could help him because the way he, the way he shoots, it looks like he's shooting with one hand. It's because his hand is so big. And I think that's it's affecting the way he shoots. That's why... Um, for him, he's a little bit hesitant, and he's still kind of working on that shot. Mm-hmm. But those are like the teams that's been surprising so far. I mean, who do you think, or of all those three teams, who do you think is going to keep it up? Um, I'm not going to predict that. Well, I'm going to say the Bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a, they've been together the longest this team, mm-hmm. um, and B, there's a little bit more pressure on on Giannis to lead this team. Yeah. So I think if it's and he put it on himself too. Yeah, yeah, said, like exactly. He wants to be he the wants MVP. To be MVP. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so it's, it's it's on him. If anything goes, you know, sideways, downwards for them, he's yeah. taking it on himself. It's that's what an MVP does, right? And I, I think with Davis, he has. I think my prediction for him is if they ever go this continue this far, he could win both MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. And mm. that's something that hasn't been done in a, either a very long time, or there's no record of it at all. Someone who wins it, defensive player and MVP at the same year. Yeah, I'll probably go with Bucks too, though. For me, I even though I like the Pelicans, the Bucks exactly with the Greek, the the Greek freak. You know, it's just his off season. You know, his focus and everything that he's been, and he didn't really play that well like last year in the in the playoffs when they really needed it. Like he didn't really take over mm-hmm. in a sense. So I feel like this was his year to redeem redeem himself, and like you said, like he wants to be MVP and he wants to he wants to show the league that like he's someone to be afraid, you know, to be afraid of. So, and how about you? Who do you think? Who do you uh, think is gonna keep it up? I think the Nuggets will, just because they almost they almost made the playoffs last year, so they they missed it by just a couple of games just because of the way uh, scheduled it and uh, the matchup. Uh, so they have a you know they have a motivation to to play better than they did last year. Or to to get on a very good start and continuing because they know what it feels like to be you know to be close to making the playoffs mm-hmm. and not making it just because the Timberwolves played the same amount of games and they won just one more game and then they missed the playoffs just because of one game. Mm-hmm. It so was Nuggets. Yeah. It was really close. Actually. A really close. Yeah. But if, Nuggets was like nine. Yeah, they were nine, and then I think it was a, game, a half a game back uh, of Timberwolves. So if like, yeah. either Timberwolves lost a game or win a game. Uh, they they didn't make the playoffs, so their their future in the playoffs depended on whether the Timbo was won or missed the, or lose a game. Yeah. Which is not you don't want to be in that situation as a team. You want to always have in control of like whether you want to you're gonna make the playoffs or not. Not dependent on someone else's team's uh, performance, right? Yeah. So that's what happened with them. The, the Timbo was able to win the game or were able to get into playoffs because they won a game and they faced a team that like wasn't even making the playoffs, so mm-hmm. it wasn't fair for. For them, but that's kind of what happens when you don't get into a good start and you kind of let that's true. Happen. So they have an inner motivation to just keep going and, and continue this hot start that they're in. And they, and they four four zero. So yeah, a win against Golden State too. That's pretty impressive. Exactly. 